And keep it going for Matthew Dix. Matthew Dix. Come on up, Matthew. Thank you. It's, a, it's well after midnight. I'm lying on my bed in a dark room. I'm on the phone. I'm speaking to Alicia. It's one of those endless phone calls you have when you're not quite dating yet and you can't stand to be apart, but you're not exactly together yet. I've known Alicia for two years. We're both school teachers. Our classrooms are one door apart. When we met, I was married and Alicia was engaged to be married. We've shed those former lives and over the course of two years, we became friends and then we became close friends and now we're falling in love. Two nights before, during one of these endless phone calls we had, Alicia told me that if we start dating, we're never gonna break up, we're gonna get married and we're gonna live together forever. <laughs> in basketball terms, this is known as going strong to the hoop. In dating terms, this is insanity. This is like the worst thing you can do to get a guy like me. You say words like this to me and I run as fast as I can, but I'm in love with this girl, so when she says these words, I just wanna run to her as fast as I can. It's getting late and I know we have to end this phone call. We both have to be at work the next morning. When Alicia says to me, listen, I have a question to ask you. And I know by the tone in her voice that it's gonna be important. She says, when we have kids someday, <laughs> is it okay that they're Jewish, that we raise them Jewish? Now, Alicia's Jewish, and I am a failed Christian who believes in nothing, so I have <laughs> no religion to bring to the table at this point, so, you know, it doesn't matter to me. And honestly, if she told me to quit my job tomorrow and to, like, deal heroin on the side of the street next to the elementary school, I would say yes. I, I love this girl so much. And so I say yes to her, but in my heart, I am thinking, no, like, I don't want my kids to be Jewish. Like, if this is a choice and it sounds like it is one, why would we want to doom our children to a lifetime of anti-Semitism and discrimination if we don't have to? Like, why do we want to permanently place them in a minority? Why do we want to saddle them with joyless holidays, with no, like, flying reindeer and, like, no discernible decorations of any kind? And why do we want to attach them to a country that is surrounded by people who want to destroy them? Like, like, no, I don't want my kids to be Jewish if I have a choice. But the kids we're talking about are theoretical and the love I have for Alicia is already real, so I say yes. Three days later, Alicia's getting into her car in the parking lot when she reaches out and she grabs me by the coat and she pulls me to her face and kisses me for the first time and we are off. Two months later, we're living together, and in December of that year, on the top of the steps in Grand Central Station, her favorite space in the world, I drop to one knee and I ask her to marry me. And she doesn't say yes, she just cries. And it is, it's a fairy tale. It is perfect and smooth and wonderful. And the only like sticking point, the only struggle we have is with Alicia's last name. She wants to hyphenate, but her last name is Green and my last name is Dix and Green Dicks does not work. She could just keep her name, Green, but she wants us to have the same name. And so she decides to take Dicks. And I know it's a hard decision. It is not an easy name to live with. Like, it is not as hard as my father, Leslie, who goes by Les Dicks. And it is not as hard as my uncle, Harold, who goes by Harry Dicks. And it's not as hard as my grandmother, who named those two poor boys. She was Odely Dicks. But Matthew Dix was hard, you know? But I also know that my name taught me to like where to punch someone in the face to hurt them the most. <laughs> and when to run from a fight. And it taught me to make fun of myself before someone else could, so I got my sense of humor that way. And when my life was at its worst, when I was homeless and when I was in jail and I was without hope of any kind, I know that that name helped to give me the strength that I needed to keep going on. And so she takes my name as hard as I know it's going to be. Three years later, that theoretical child is born. Her name is Clara. And a little while later, Charlie comes. And they both take my name. They have no choice. And so they become dicks. <laughs> and so we're in the car one day. We're driving through the Berkshires. We're going to see Alicia's in-laws. 
The kids are in the back asleep. Charlie, Clara's facing forward and Charlie's facing back. And the car's quiet. We're listening to Simon and Garfunkel. When Alicia, like out of the blue, says to me, I wish I hadn't taken your last name. I wish I was still green. And I ask her why, and she tells me she's worried about the kids. She's worried that they're going to be bullied and teased. And it's the hardest thing she has ever said to me. And I'm not really sure why it hurts me so much when she does. Because if she had kept her name green when we got married, I wouldn't have cared. But she's taken my name, and it means something to me today. It is, it is something I'm proud of. It's something I've made into something good in my mind. Like, it is on college diplomas that I never thought I would earn. It is on the cover of books I never thought I would publish. And it is the thing that I share with her and my kids. And I know it's not easy, but it is the struggle that it has given me that makes me who I am today. And in that moment, in that instant, suddenly everything changes and my heart fills with joy because I am right back on that phone call when she asks me to raise the kids Jewish and my heart is screaming no. And suddenly my heart is screaming yes because now I understand that like, the Judaism that my kids have is going to be the same thing as my last name. It's going to be a struggle, but that struggle is a good thing. And I think about her and my family and my Jewish friends and how strong they are and how they are like unstoppable people because of the struggle that they have had and the things they've had to face and their unbearable holidays with like bitter herbs and the 10 <laughs> plagues. Like they are incredible people because of what they have endured. And I look in the rearview mirror on this little street in the Berkshires and I see these two kids behind me and for the first time in my life, I am ecstatic that they are Jewish. That they are going to have this struggle, but they're gonna come out in the end stronger than we can imagine, stronger than me and Alicia will ever be. They are our kids. They are two little Jewish dicks. <laughs> and they are going to conquer the world. Thank you.